Before the invasion of Ukraine, Russia prided itself on its tank force, and many international military experts bought into the Kremlin's hype. Russia had the world's largest tank fleet, at over 12,500 units, and Western experts feared that its newest tank, the T-14 Armada, would prove superior to any of the tanks in NATO's arsenal. Another of the Russian armored vehicles that Western experts feared before the invasion was the scary-sounding BMPT Terminator. This vehicle was fast, well-armored, and armed to the teeth, and yet when it was deployed to the battlefields of Ukraine, it proved to be of little consequence, unable to change the tempo of the war. While effective, the BMPT Terminator proved far from the terror that the Kremlin said it was. Let's take a look at the history of the BMPT Terminator and how it did not exactly perform as Russia's military bloggers and Putin's regime advertised when it actually went to war. The BMPT Terminator saw its origins in the Chechen Wars of the 1990s. In these urban conflicts, Chechen fighters armed with light anti-tank weapons like RPGs took a terrible toll on Russian armored forces, as troops bearing these arms fired down from rooftops and high-story perches on the thinly protected tops of Russian tanks, destroying them in large numbers. To make matters worse for the Russian armor, it could not retaliate because the turrets on Russia's tanks and armored vehicles, like the BMP, cannot raise their main guns at high angles. They can't lower their guns to low angles either, and Chechen fighters would ambush them from basements too. In response to the poor performance of its armored forces against the Chechens, the Russians designed a new armored vehicle, the BMPT Terminator. While these vehicles are designed to support main battle tanks in urban warfare, they come armed with twin 30mm autocannons capable of firing multiple types of rounds, ranging from hardened armor-piercing rounds to explosive shells. Both autocannons come with a capacity of 850 rounds. To make the Terminator more versatile, it can load different rounds in each of its autocannons, so one gun can fire anti-personnel rounds and another can shoot armor-piercing shells. The autocannons have a range between 2.5 and, and 4 kilometers depending on the round. The targeting system was originally designed to give gunners the ability to designate one target for one round and another for a different round if need be, but this was found to be confusing and impractical and subsequently discontinued by the Russian brass. It is possible that this capability could be restored with advances in artificial intelligence, but given that this is Russia we're talking about, it's probably best not to bet on that possibility coming to fruition anytime soon. BMPT Terminator tanks can also carry a set of four Attacka T 130mm guided missiles, two in pods on either side of the vehicle's autocannons. These missiles are versatile and can be used in an anti armor role, a high explosive building clearing role, or even to attack some helicopters. Thermobaric versions can also be deployed. The Attacka missiles can hit targets up to six kilometers away. As a tertiary weapon, the BMPT Terminator has a 7.62mm PTKM machine gun with a capacity of 2,100 rounds. One version of the Terminator also comes armed with four AG-17D 30mm grenade launchers with a capacity of up to 600 rounds, which it can fire at a rate of 480 rounds per minute. These grenades have a kill radius of 7 meters and a range of 1.7 kilometers. The vehicle has a crew of five men. And there's another version of the Terminator, which lacks the grenade launchers and comes with a crew of three. The BMPT Terminator has separate sights for the commander and gunner, giving it redundancy if one of the sights malfunctions. Laser range finders and computerized fire control systems support these sights. These systems are designed to operate in conjunction with the vehicle's high speed of 60 km per hour while it's cruising. Defensively, the BMPT Terminator is shielded by explosive reactive armor. This is armor that disrupts anti-tank weapons by exploding outwards when a projectile makes contact with it, preventing the worst from happening to the vehicle. The Terminator has metal grills on its sides and back also, which can reduce the penetration power of some anti-armor weapons. The vehicle also has six smoke grenades on each side of the turret and a screening system that warns the crew if their vehicle is being subjected to laser tracking. The Terminator's crew can raise the vehicle's gun turret to 45 degrees, allowing them to fire at threats from above. The turret can also move downward to negative 5 degrees, making the vehicle effective at attacking targets from below or directly in front of it. The turret can also spin 360 degrees. This maneuverability makes the BMPT Terminator far less vulnerable than other Russian tanks and armored vehicles. This one can actually retaliate if troops fire on it from rooftops. The vehicle weighs about 53 tons 
and has a cruising range of 500 kilometers. Its engine is nearly 1,000 horsepower and it's maneuverable. The Terminator can traverse ditches between 2.6 and 2.8 meters wide. It can also dive into 1.2 meters of water, which can increase to 1.8 meters if it uses a snorkel. The BMPT Terminator is manufactured by Ural Wagenzawer, the company based in Nizhny Tagil and Sverdlovsk Oblast, which manufactures many of Russia's other tanks and armored vehicles. Future plans for the BMPT Terminator include the possibility of it becoming fully robotic. The Terminator's existence reflects Russian doctrine about warfare. Western countries learned from urban fighting in Iraq about just how important it is to integrate infantry and armored units effectively. In these counterinsurgency operations, infantry would dismount and clear buildings, infantry and armored units would support one another closely in this process. It was a combined arms approach to city fighting. Russian doctrine, however, is all about tanks and artillery, so it designed an armored vehicle that would answer the problems that it faced in urban combat in Chechnya. According to Russian doctrine, each main battle tank in an urban setting should be protected by two Terminators, while in open terrain it's the opposite, each Terminator should be protected by two tanks. Unfortunately for the Kremlin, since Russia only has a few Terminators in active service and it is questionable if it'll be able to manufacture any more thanks to Western sanctions, this doctrine has proven not quite applicable in Ukraine. Russia doesn't seem sure about how to use its new Terminator tanks, and this uncertainty has played out on the battlefield. But more on that in a moment. Despite all the hype, the program had a rocky start in Russia, and Kazakhstan was the first operator of the BMPT Terminator. The latter ordered 10 of the vehicles in 2010 and saw them delivered between 2011 and 2013. Algeria was the second operator, ordering 300 in April 2016, but only 13 wound up being delivered. Azerbaijan and Peru expressed interest in the Terminator tank, but none were ever delivered to those countries. The BMPT Terminator finally found service in its homeland in the late 2010s. In 2017, the Russian ground forces signed a contract agreeing to use the BMPT Terminator. The vehicles were delivered and entered service in the Russian military the following year. The BMPT and its variants are built on the chassis of a T-72 or a T-90 tank. The Russian brass has talked about building a Terminator 3 unit on the chassis of the T-14 Armada. However, given that only about 20 Armada tanks have ever been built, the Terminator 3 is unlikely to come to fruition anytime soon. The BMPT Terminator, like so much of Russia's supposedly most advanced warfighting assets, was initially absent in the invasion of Ukraine. The reasons for this are not known, but given that Putin believed his military's own hype and expected the regime in Kyiv to fall in days, he might have believed that it was not necessary to risk one of Russia's best weapon systems, one which had already seen some sales abroad. When Kyiv did not fall and the Russian military found itself in a long war of attrition, things began to change. The first Terminator units were spotted in Ukraine in May 2022 in the Battle of Severodonetsk, three months after the invasion. The deployment of this unit was mostly psychological, although the BMPT Terminator's combat debut came at a moment when Russia was proving most effective in the war, there were far too few of these vehicles to meaningfully affect the outcome of military operations. Indeed, footage swirled of the BMPT Terminator needing to retreat from its first combat engagement. That would be far from the end of its story in Ukraine, however. The relatively few Terminator armored vehicles have performed better than Russia's main battle tank fleet which has taken terrible casualties in the face of Ukrainian resistance. Some Russian military bloggers have even implored the Kremlin to replace the outdated T-72 tank with Terminator units. In stark contrast to Russia's traditional tanks, which have often been blown sky-high thanks to their ammunition storage design, the BMPT Terminator has taken few casualties. The BMPT Terminator does not have the same design flaw as Russia's main battle tanks, giving it increased survivability which may be one of the reasons it was able to retreat to safety in May 2022. According to some of the military bloggers, the Terminator has proven formidable in urban and forested environments in Ukraine. The survivability dichotomy between the Terminator and its main battle tank comrades played out after the former's deployment in Ukraine. Although deployed only in small numbers, the first confirmed kill of a BMPT Terminator came in February 2023, nine months after the unit's initial entry into the war meaning that these units had survived until then. The BMPT Terminator's design seems well-suited for modern warfare. Russia's always emphasized its tank forces, but tank-on-tank -tank combat has proven rare in Ukraine. 
Indirect fire, especially with the help of drones, has been the norm in Ukraine. Drones and other precision strikes make it far easier to spot tanks and shoot them indirectly over great distances, long before they ever get into range for a traditional tank duel. The death of the tank, so often spoken of in military circles, has proven far from the case in Ukraine though, despite the relative lack of traditional tank combat there. Tanks remain useful for storming enemy positions, but the traditional tank gun is less suited for this purpose. After all, if tank-on-tank -tank combat is becoming rarer, tank turrets loaded with rounds to take out other tanks might not be so optimal. This is where the BMPT Terminator has seemed to shine. Footage taken of the Terminator vehicles in Ukraine seems to show them performing well in multi-purpose rapid assault roles. Video footage has also shown Terminator vehicles fighting well at night. In July 2023, Russia's Terminator tank took part in action near Avdiivka, in what may have been part of a staging operation for Russia's offensive toward that settlement later in the year. Russian sources claim that during a night engagement, a Terminator fired 400 high-explosive fragmentation and armor-piercing shells at Ukrainian targets four kilometers away. So, how has Ukraine dealt with Russian Terminator vehicles, which have proven among them more effective in the conflict? Has the BMPT Terminator lived up to the hype that some of the Russian military bloggers have assigned to it? Ukraine scored its first confirmed kill of a BMPT Terminator in February 2023, when an artillery unit scored a direct hit on one in Kremina in Luhansk Oblast. The gunners attacked a Terminator that had been sitting idly on a forest road. The unit may have been damaged or had mechanical difficulties before then. The damage to this unit was total. The artillery shell struck the vehicle's ammunition magazine, indicated by the fireball in the blast. Ukraine has also demonstrated its ability to be more innovative in the ways it's destroyed the Terminator tanks. The next confirmed combat loss of a BMPT Terminator came in August 2023 near the town of Spartak in Donetsk Oblast. There, Ukraine once again proved its prowess in drone warfare. Ukraine Special Forces Group Alpha posted a video showing a swarm of small, grenade-bearing, first-person view drones chasing down and assaulting one of Russia's Terminator tanks. The Terminator was at least immobilized after the action and needed to be towed by a nearby T-80 main battle tank. That tank was also hit in a drone strike. This incident lacked the fireball that accompanied the Terminator destroyed in the February attack, so the unit may have been salvageable. Ukrainian forces nevertheless gloated about the incident, saying on X, formerly Twitter, this rare model of enemy weaponry burned down after only a few hits from kamikaze drones. They tried to pull out the downed Terminator with a T-80 tank, but it was also hit. FVP drones have proven to be some of Ukraine's best anti-vehicle weapons, and they are cheap, costing only about $5,000 each. Their cheapness and ease of control with a virtual reality headset has made them popular on both sides of the conflict. The Terminator may have been designed to shoot at upward targets but it was clearly not prepared to shoot at multiple fast-moving targets like FPV drones. The vehicle may not have been put permanently out of commission, but given that only perhaps 10 of them have been deployed to Ukraine, the loss of even one is a great blow to Russia. The third incident came in September 2023, on the 27th of the month. Ukrainian soldiers, this time in the mutant group, again employed FPV drones, again near Spartak, to damage or destroy a BMPT Terminator. The vehicle had used an infamous cope cage for added protection, but that was not enough to prevent the drones from going to town on it. Given the timing and vicinity of the incident, some observers wondered whether this vehicle was the same as the Terminator damaged in August, but there was no way to verify this. A BREM recovery vehicle was also damaged in the attack. Again, there was no fireball indicating that its ammunition had been torched, but the vehicle was at least temporarily out of commission and Ukraine proved the concept of attacking Russia's Terminator tanks with drones. Repeat successful drone attacks show one of the Terminator's weaknesses and the weakness of other contemporary armored vehicles. The BMPT Terminator might be armed to the teeth, but it is not designed to hit such fast-moving small targets. The Terminator's engineers were reportedly trying to improve the vehicle's air defense systems as early as 2018, but these improvements were meant to be against helicopters especially ones capable of firing missiles from distances of up to 5 kilometers. Drone defenses were not mentioned. The Terminator tank comes with other weaknesses too. The vehicle might have a lot in the way of offense, but defensively it is lacking. In contrast to the turret of a main battle tank, a Terminator's turret is much more lightly armored. 
The vehicle's missiles are armored to protect against explosive fragments and shrapnel, but that's about it. The hull might protect the crew, but the top of the vehicle is vulnerable. Concentrated small arms fire on the turret of a Terminator tank would be sufficient to imperil its weapons. The design is particularly vulnerable to something like a javelin, which attacks its target on a downward trajectory to avoid the most heavily armored features of the tank, or in this case, the BMPT Terminator. Another problem that the Terminator tank has is it lacks the situational awareness that a combined arms approach to warfare would have, no matter how advanced its sensors are. The United States learned through experience in Iraq that armored vehicles cannot replace the situational awareness and rapid response time of infantry support. It's a lesson that Russia clearly has not learned in Ukraine. Although Soviet gear and doctrine still permeates much of the Ukrainian military, it is rapidly absorbing the lessons in doctrine and training afforded by its Western allies, and Ukraine has had much better success in integrating infantry and other arms with its armor than its Russian opponents have. The two Ukrainian drone attacks against Terminator tanks serve as a good example. Russia's overall failure of giving its Terminator and other armored vehicles adequate infantry support is one of the reasons why it has lost so many of them in the conflict. The Terminator tank escaped to this fate for a time, but two incidents in two months demonstrate that Ukraine is adapting to the presence of this vehicle. Interestingly, one of the ways that Ukraine originally sought to adapt to the Russian Terminator tank was to build a model of its own. These vehicles are known as the Stras, or Sentinel. In October 2017, a Ukrainian company called Zytomir Armored Plant unveiled an armored vehicle similar to Russia's Terminator tank. It used the chassis of a T-64 main battle tank and had a turret that also looked like the Terminator's. The turret boasted twin ZTM-2 30mm autocannons, a Ukrainian adaptation of the Soviet ZA-42. Two PKT 7.62mm machine guns served as secondary weapons. The Sentinel also came packed with four anti-tank guided missile launchers, with two mounted on the side of each turret. There was also an AG-17 30mm automatic grenade launcher in the center on top of the turret. Three smoke grenade launchers were attached to the sides of the turret as well, giving the vehicle more concealability in the event that it came under attack. The Sentinel was designed for a crew of three men. The vehicle unveiled in 2017 had explosive reactive armor on its front and sides. The driver sat in the front at the center of the hull, with the other two crew members at the front of the turret. Each crew member was to have their own hatch. The driver had a periscope, and the top of the turret was mounted with a video monitor, laser rangefinder, and electronic systems. However, despite these seemingly impressive features, Ukraine never put these vehicles into mass production and has not used them in its fight against the Russian invaders. Information on why it chose not to pursue the Sentinel is a little elusive, but it could be because of NATO training. Since Western doctrine insists on close cooperation between infantry and armor, while Russian doctrine tends to solve all problems with tanks and artillery, Ukraine might have no longer seen a need for the production of an expensive tank when it could focus on cheaper, more rapid-fire support systems for its traditional tanks, like anti-armor infantry and drones. Given the limited number of BMPT Terminator tanks that Russia's built, the vehicle's vulnerable turret, and its now demonstrated weakness to drones, it may be that Ukraine was wise to avoid what could have been a costly rabbit hole. The jury is still out on the Terminator's overall effectiveness on the modern battlefield compared to a traditional tank, but the idea promoted by some of the Russian military bloggers that this vehicle would be a major boost for Russia's struggling effort in Ukraine appears to be just that, an idea. What do you think about the BMPT Terminator tank? If it were produced in greater numbers, would it have been better luck on modern battlefields than Russia's main battle tank fleet? Don't forget to let us know in the comments. Also, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more military analysis from military experts.